Today we're going to have a look at modeling with primitives. If you're new to modeling or if you want to use parametrical objects, especially for animating, you will be amazed of uh, about how much you can do with using primitive objects only. First of all, I set the default color to 80% gray to see better. And in order to, let's just start with the, the cylinder so I can explain better. Um, in order to see those polygons better when I have not selected my object, um, because there's just Goro shading going on, I will change to display Goro shading lines so I can see the topology of my objects even when I not um, uh, have not that object selected. So the trick is the following. Um, there are maybe, I don't know, maybe like 10 or 15 objects, uh, those called primitives. And the one trick is that you can combine them to create a lot of new shapes and that all those objects are not as simple as they might appear because there are loads of things you can change about them. So let's start with uh, the changing thing um, and the probably most primitive object is the polygon. The polygon can either be some rectangular shape and you can change its um, dynam dimensions and uh, its proportions. And it's easy for, for using, for example, a piece of floor or if you just need some, some window, for example, you can put it up like this and then you have a, a billboard or something. You can put a, a texture with a human or a tree on it. And for, for simple stuff like that, a polygon might be just enough. You can also subdivide it. This is useful, for example, if you want to use, say, deformers later on, or if you, if you have more complex stuff in mind with polygon modeling, then you could convert this polygon and change um, the geometry to, to create new shapes like this. But for this tutorial, I just go to command Z a few times. We will stay with, with objects that are still editable. So make sure this one, uh, this icon here is still yellow. So you shouldn't have converted that polygon because we will focus on what we can change. Apart from segmenting it, you can check triangle and that's what you will get. If you are going for a segmented structure or a, a plane which is segmented, I would recommend you to not use polygon because it makes you dependent of the of the sides. So when I have um, proportions like this, the segments will be stretched as well. So there's no way of getting, for example, um, square polygons in there. If you're, if you want that, you shouldn't use polygon, but rather the plane instead. The plane allows you to have a shape like this, stretched one. I'll just click on that uh, really small uh, orange, um, orange squares here, those little po dots. And if you want to change the the subdivision in one direction but not in the other you can do it like this and then it's still possible to put something in there which is more like squares okay that were the most primitive um, objects um, among the primitive ones which uh, is plane and polygons again you can change the orientation 
just using this button here and yeah I think it's kind of obvious what you can do with um, say a single um, object for example you can put it into an array it works just like this you click on array here and you drag and drop the polygon in there so now you have two options you can either change the primitive object the way we did before or you can change the array settings like the radius the number of copies something called amplitude which um, would um, kind of make this structure wavy uh, doesn't work in this case and you can activate render instances so those polygons or those objects um, don't use up that much memory you can also use a single object of course just to um, to make more copies of it the quickest way is to hold down control um, while you're moving it so you move it up hold down control and release the mouse button and then you done a copy important about this is if you change the original the copies won't follow if you want that then you should make sure you um, don't use copies but instances instead they are to be found among the arrays or among this symbol there's the instance and you can just pull it out then so it works like this make sure the original object is selected then you go to instance and it will automatically create an instance of the original you can check the instance here where it says reference object and this shows us it's linked with this object here so if I change the name a it's still referencing to object a so that would be quite cool if you think about it we can just pull copies of the instance now and when I change the original a all the objects will follow now what if I have another object for example a cube I just scale it down hitting or pressing T and moving my mouse button from right to left to make it smaller and E to move it aside and now I want to keep the coordinates of those instances but I would like to change the object they are referring to so what do I do I just pull a rectangle over the instances and now I just change the reference object you can do so by clicking on that arrow and just click on the cube so now the instances are referencing to the cube now let's do or let's go even one step further how about I want to reference to both objects at the same time so I want the instances to refer to the cube as well as the polygon I have down here just check it again the polygon instances reference to cube so I just put polygon A underneath the cube and now all those instances have the have both objects applied and the way they are positioned like that there's an offset between them has to do with the relation of the positions of the cube um, the original cube to the original polygon so if I change their positions all the instances will follow it's quite useful for example 
imagine you have lamps here and you want to put light bulbs in there or, or some light sources then you just need to do that once and all the copies will follow so you can put an infinite number of objects into those instances and again I could just hold or click excuse me press alt G for grouping the cube again so it's in a null I can call it something like lamp and then I have something like a container and I can just pull the lamp into the reference object so now I could even exchange the whole stuff in my lamp group and for example put a light in there put it in the null object and then I will have polygon instances so really really useful if I delete the original object the references uh, excuse me the instances have no reference anymore and it's shown by this little red cross in here so it shows I still have the coordinates like like that one but there's no object I, I should refer to or I'm supposed to refer to so we set up a new polygon again and select all those instances and put up a reference now how about you want to have regular distances between this object and this and that just delete the instances again and going from this original polygon we want to create instances that are aligned somehow for that you go to tools arrange objects and there you can go to duplicate and duplicating creates you when you hit apply here if you don't see apply make sure all those three things here are activated the quickest is just to stroke with your mouse over all three just like that you click with the left mouse button you don't release it but you just stroke over all those three fields and then you just click apply and to to set them off you should choose a mode I will go for linear and now there is an offset in X Y and Z and if I reduce Y I will see the copies so if you want to have a stack of paper or some decks of a building then you could create them just like that you could of course um, change the scale of objects for each step make sure per step is activated then you can put in a rotation just like so and of course you can change the number of copies but you have to be aware that the copies are added with the same distance so if you want to put them closer like squashing that you should reduce the distance again So I have created something like this. And now make sure you have the right clone mode activated. You can either create copies, then you will have editable or at least um, like objects on their own. But after having applied that transformation, those are single polygons with their own values but they won't listen to the original which is here anymore so if I change the for example the scale of this all those copies do not listen listen so if I you have to to make this sure from from the beginning if you're going to the duplication tools 
arrange objects duplicate then you have to to make this decision first like whether you want to have instances with instances they look like this again and then they would listen to the original so if I change this all the objects do follow and if you want to save uh, memory you can even go to while clicking the original to tool arrange objects duplicate and then you go to render instances so for us they work the same they will just do the copies but for the computer um, it's, it makes it possible to use loads of instances without using up much memory. There were more objects among arrange objects duplicate uh, more options like using a circular um, a circular arrangement with some more options they might be worth checking it out alright what else can I do um, of course if I want to position it on on zero again I should put in zeros there and what else can we do um, we could um, put them on a spline so if you've drawn a spline like this and you want the object and its instances follow this line in their arrangement you just click on the polygon again go to tools arrange objects duplicate and then you go to a long spline and then it's asking for a spline so click on that arrow again and select the spline so it's in there now and all we have to do is click apply and then the copies or excuse me the in my case render instances will just follow along that line so this might be quite useful for example for placing loads of trees or just other randomly distributed objects just draw a spline and apply those so what if I want to to create trees out of this now just delete the polygon so all the instances are placed but they are have no reference and then you might want to just select a pyramid there's not much you can change about the pyramid but you could use duplicates of it put them in a hierarchy so one pyramid is over the other and I will just scale down the pyramids the higher they get so this could be like a symbol for a tree if you want to make all those smaller you could either use the top object and scale it down so the others will follow or if you want to be really perfect you could also put that whole thing in a null going to um, just pressing alt G call those objects tree and now the instances are asking for a reference object so we just go to tree and that way we still can exchange the model easily once we have a better tree so that way we could easily build up a whole forest just by going to the top view I will just delete that things and if I have a photo for example in my background and I want to distribute trees I could just do it like this so along there there should be trees um, uh, placed so I would then 
take that tree object, go to tools, arrange objects, duplicate. I will just use instances, so I'm a little more flexible, I guess. Take that forest spline. Hit apply just to see the effect. And then I, so then I see I have to use loads of more objects. And what I like is that they stick a little closer together in some places and are rather, um, like a bit more spacey uh, in some areas, but what I don't like is their orientation. So they should be mixed up a little. Just enable rotation here and make sure they they align properly. And now we can rotate them. Shouldn't activate banking, but just rotate X. And uh, that way they should be a bit more um, mixed up. So they're not really in, in, in a line anymore. And maybe I can vary their scale a little, but that's just in this case or with this tool I can just do this globally. So I should keep with instances for now and then you could help yourself for variation of their sizes by just um, choosing choosing randomly some some trees. And, um, excuse me, just um, scaling them up. Like, um, you go to coordinates, and then there's a way of um, changing their sizes by going to coordinate manager and then use the scale option. So that way I will have some bigger ones and some smaller ones and in my experience it might be enough to use like three or five different sizes. This will lead to an okay result. Uh, especially if they the sizes are not too different if if you're really close together then i don't think many people will notice you're just having like five basic sizes and if it says multiply in there you can just ignore it it's it's basically says that um yeah it has has different sizes applied at the moment but you can override this by just going in there and using your own scale. So that way you could build up a forest with um, primitives only. Now, it, let's say you have a, a, a mixed forest, like there are those objects in there, and at the same time you have trees that look like this. I just go to Sphere, click on S, so I want to have a more roundish tree. It's supposed to look like in an architectural model. So it's rather abstract. Put the, put a cylinder on there for the stem. Again, I make sure to, to not use that many polygons for that. So I reduce the rotation segments quite a bit because you have to think about it that way. We are using hundreds of instances and we don't want to, to spend too many polygons on it. So let's say this is my other tree. I just put it in a null and it might be a little too big. So I should make sure the axis is not up there 
but instead it should be positioned at the bottom. So you should do this before you place any instances or duplicate it. Make sure you click on this again to so it's not highlighted, otherwise you won't be able to move the whole tree. And the cool thing is now, because my axis is on the bottom of that null object, I can now scale them and the object is always positioned on the floor. So now I might want to use the the same spline again, but just um, turn it around so people will not not you or really notice that I'm using the same spline again. Maybe scale it a little just to make it less obvious. And this time I'm using this altered spline to to place my other tree there, just doing the same tool, arrange object, duplicate, and it's still using the same spline, so it should be enough to just click apply and maybe make lesser instances of that, not that many. And the whole thing can be grouped, just the copies and the original trees. So just select both, hit Alt G and call it other trees. So I could still move them around or whatever. Now I think I used too many polygons on the sphere. So let's click going back to the sphere and just use 8 segments or maybe 12. Yep, that would be a forest um, to be seen from an aerial photograph and that's a way to arrange objects using splines. Okay. Let's do this thing with the axis again, because that might be a problem with um, parametrical objects. They get created out of the center, so the axis will always stick right in the middle of the object. And you, you cannot change that if you want to keep that stuff, um, all those values, changeable. So the probably simplest way to, to put the axis, for example, on the ground of the object or on the base is to just put the object or the object you have selected in a null. So hit or press Alt G. And now let's do it differently. Let's pull it out again. And if you just create a null, right excuse me, here, and you place this seen from front. You can change with middle mouse button between those views. You place this null on the bottom by moving it there, holding down shift, then you are on the base, and then you just drop the cube in there, and then you go to null object again, and use the position Y there. So now the great thing is you can scale it, rotate it, and especially position it all from the base. So for orientation you use the null, the parented null, and for changing the measurements, you just go to the cube object itself. The cube has the ability to, to get round corners. That might be handy for setting up a couch or any other soft rounded object.
Okay, now how about a little project? Let's um, build a lamp and we can use cylinders for that. Make sure you use proper sizes like um, a, rad excuse me, a radius of 8 and a size of 1.6 maybe. Hit S to zoom in there and the base is a little too thick I think. We could use some more rotation segments to make it look like this. And I still think it's a little a little high, so let's go for point eight. You can just point uh, or type point or comma seven or something and hit enter. And cinema will do the zero for you. And if you want to have smooth corners then go to caps and use fillet maybe one segment would do and then you just go point two or maybe smaller point one so it looks like this you will notice that there is some gradient on the on the luminance of the object I can show you better by going to display Goro shading and there's like something is not right here because this object should be perfectly flat on, on top but it looks kind of bent. What's wrong with that? It, it turned up when we checked the fillets or when we activated the fillets so Cinema 4D has a problem if there is huge polygons and tiny ones next to each other um, so what we need to do is to go to the font tag and reduce its, its angle you can find out the right angle by just going downwards and mostly it's there's a difference between more than 40 degrees and less in this case we can go to maybe like 40 and then we have this surface here um, even shaded again like it looks flat and we still have those nice fillet I would l like to do this even smaller 0.5 and to make it a little more realistic we can even um, increase the the segments so it looks more like it's round right after you created the cylinder you should rename it, I call it base and make sure it's not halfway in the floor again so we can just use half its height in the coordinate manager so the height is 0.7 let's just copy this value in case it would be more complex you could just use right click and click copy then go to coordinate paste it there you can also use command V for that excuse me pasting copy paste and of course if we just use that value it would be too high halfway because it's using the distance from here to there so we need to divide it by two and that way it will be perfectly placed on the ground If we still have shading issues, we can go down to something like 20 or so, but I th think, let's go to, excuse me, to Fong again. Now we need to go even further down because we have more fillets. I have to use the Fong angle of 12 degrees to make it look good. This gradient here is okay because it is round, but here it should be flat. So that's the base. So now if we want to create another cylinder here, we don't have to use a new one. We could just use the old one. Um, create a copy by by just taking it, dropping, um, pulling it down and pressing control and then we just go to the view from front for example pull the cylinder up 
let's deactivate the fillets for now so we can easier pull it inwards and make it like so. I will go to back to display Goro shading lines because that makes me see better that there are far too many subdivisions for this really really thin cylinder. So let's go to let's just put the rotation segments to 16. So it's always good if you see those lines. If it's really dense like this, then this is a really bad model. Let's go to maybe as low as 12. So now we have a base and some cylinder there. But if you go really close, you see that now we see those single facets, like those polygons. And to make this smooth again, we have to use a different Fong angle. So for the base, we need a very, very low Fong angle. This means the angle from here to there like this to there. Uh, this needs to be low, but for our, um, I, I don't know the, the English word for it, so let's just call it, I don't know, bar or something, or, or maybe stem, or I don't know what. Um, and go to Fong here. It's the same as if I had clicked here. I can just use Fong, it's the same. And let's put it up to, oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. I have to go to stem, of course, and raise this value to maybe 40, so it looks smooth again. Now, what I don't like about models is when I have one thing um, just like being stuffed in another, so we have really, really sharp edges and you could could probably not construct it that way. So we have a few tricks, like we could either make sure this thing I just called stem um, ends up right here. So I will just use um, straight numbers here, like 36 for the height and half of it for coordinates, so I have 18, and the only thing I'm missing now is the distance from here to there, so the base is 0.7, so all I need to do is to get to the cylinder's coordinates and say plus 0.7, and then it will be um, fine, but it will look the same then. Now, what we could do is use caps again. And those caps are too small to see at the moment. So I could use something like this. In this case, it's not realistic, but I want to show you anyway. That would be one way to just show, okay, there's, there's something something going on here or which is probably clever in this case is to just put something like a ring around that so so just to increase realism we can take um a, a tube for example this is basically looking like a cylinder with a hole in it and the cool thing is you can change its dimensions so that you have something going on for the, the transition here. It's just a little more credible. And another thing is you should always use some gaps. So don't make objects um, perfect to um, to each other. There should always be some some space in between. And making those look perfect is is 
an important job in modeling. If you want to do it even more realistic, you can use fillets here as well. And about the fillets, uh, again, for I just call it ring. Check the fong angles. And um, about the fillets, I would make sure if you you should you uh, use same radiuses for the fillets for similar objects. So if you have a model, you shouldn't vary those fillet sizes too much. They should you should use same numbers and really think about it how they are shaped in in reality. So there's an inner radius and an outer radius, and it's quite easy in Cinema 4D to use precise numbers. So for example, this object would have an inner circle or inner radius by 0.4, outer by 0.6, and a height of uh, half a millimeter, I think. No, uh, excuse me. That's one centimeter, so yeah, it is um, five millimeters. Okay, then let's see if there's more we can use. We can just take that stem, use a copy, rotate this around. Pull it up, and change its dimensions. One more thing for the stem, we should still activate the fillet for the top piece because there are not too many materials which allow you to to cut them off that suddenly so it should be you should always have something like this because this is where you get nice looking highlights if you think this is a little too rough you can use more rotation segments of course and it really depends on the radius and the viewing angle and the distance from the camera to the object how many objects you uh, how many segments you need so this might vary quite a lot and again we need fillets here but i will um, not use them right now because i want to have more copies i just call this horizontal cylinder use another copy of that and put one here i go to the view from top hit s to get closer to my selection and place one object here and now i pull this there while i'm pulling it i hold down control and i have another copy here you can move over by holding down alt and using middle mouse button at the same time and then i just use that little spot there to pull it out so that would be this and if i'm happy with the uh, with the dimensions, I can click on all three objects and activate their fillet at the same time. So I have to do it, don't have to do it every time. So you can see there's some weird shading going on. So let's just click on all three again, go to Fong and reduce it to, I think 12 was a good value. So, ah, oh no, that's way too low. 
we shouldn't see those kind of steps. That's a little better. Um, maybe not really. I mean, if you put materials on it, you probably will not see it, but um, that way we have to use a little value in between, like we're um, just using a bit more of rotation segments. So we have to find a way to 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 get a proper shading. And of course, those gaps here are too huge. They should be minimal. And while modeling, you sh really should take a time to to get this uh, done precisely. I will just go through it real quick. And um, excuse me. Let's make the radius a lot smaller. Same for the height and you can again use that cylinder called stem to actually use the lamp shade or whatever go to top view pull it across and now this is getting a little difficult sometimes because there's one um one way to to what yeah um one point for the radius and another one for the radius of the whole object so we have to get really close or just activate the fillet for a second so it's easier And now I'm probably messing up the proportions, but it's more about the workflow in this tutorial. And now I would like to create a shape like this, like a proper shade. So I will use a cone and this cone has a nice option which is the top radius so that way it's not a cone anymore but a kind of shortened cone and how do I put the cone into this cylinder up there there's two ways that are quite quick you can either put the cone underneath the lampshade and put all those coordinates to zero that way we could make sure it's right in there so we just have to use the upwards axis to position it or I just move it somewhere else, like some random place. There's an even quicker way. You just go to Tools, Arrange Objects, and then there is Transfer. So you can just click on the cylinder and it moves right in there. So how do we get it the right way? We can either change the orientation to Epsilon Y. Yeah, I think that's the quickest way to do it and pull it up there. Now, I don't mind the gaps because they are there in reality too. And of course, I don't need the segments here, so I can get rid of them. I should make sure the cone and the lampshade have the same rotation segments. So 36 seems reasonable. And the cone 
does not really need a a cap but so I can I can lower this or or whatever um, but what it needs is fillets of course just like the lampshade and in this case I should really make sure they have the same fillet so let's use the fillet here and put it to 0.1 same with the cone at the I think it's top now but we'll see no that was wrong let's go to bottom because I switched the orientation and we go to 0.1 as well for I think the height and the radius and the bottom should have 0 0.1 0 0.1 as well so now what we need is another tube here let's just create a new one right here make it smaller where is it gone okay it's tiny now so let's pull it up and use the function again by the way you can either look for those um, tools the ordinary way but you can also go to the things you last used this is like a history of tools uh, right here and I go to transfer click on this pull it up go to the right view use pretty much the same radius put on a proper height and now the inner radius should be made accordingly and um, then we need fillets again three and I think I used point point one I don't know if not of course I cannot use create bigger fillets than my object allows so yeah this would be a lamp for the wire I should go for um, using a spline but now one thing I notice is that the distribution of polygons is not even so I have too many segments going on here and there are less here so that doesn't look correct by the way if you want to get rid of this axis just for a second you click or you excuse me you press alt d just click on the cylinders and now let's use maybe just 16 segments so this should look like it's evenly spaced same with the cylinder and even that it, it should just look like it has the same density of um, of lines okay don't forget to to name the stuff just double click in it type something you're probably better at English than me so you can give it proper names and uh, once you did that you should make sure you have a, a proper order of things this is not necessary for um, for the computer but it's useful for you if, if it's more logic put the base on top then we had the ring then there was the stem 
and then we get the horizontal elements you could even name those if you wanted to like um back middle and i don't know front or something you can switch between those but just by using the arrow keys and when you're finished with the last one you can just hit enter let's see if there's a way to to get this cap removed just well we could of course um remove the caps in total but then we we're losing the one down here or we could try to create this shape this outer shape with a different object um, would be cool to to use the tube for that and to change the top and the bottom radius but that's not possible so um, we would have to edit that then or, or use a deformer or whatever but I'm happy with it the way it is now and I want to show you something else which is important for example for um, texturing or easier arrangements we should put all the elements together who share the same material and um, that are connected with each other so I can use this one for one object just selecting them and go to or press alt G and call this base then we have this three items with oh yeah now I know why we raised it up because of the phone well then we have to keep it like this um, and I use those three horizontal parts press alt G call this horizontal and put the shade oh I forgot the connector so I drag it in and then we have those three objects here and I should put them into no another group and call them call it shade now what I should do is position the axis centers correctly just go if you did that um, use alt D press alt D again so you can see the center of each group and they should be positioned correctly for at least two reasons the first is if you use this lamp as a prop in your visualization for example or just in your scene then you want to make sure or you, you want to have quick ways to make sure that stuff is positioned at the bottom for example so we always um, go for for the edges and you could either do it like this go to the axis modification and put in the position manually like you say world and use the height value y and put in zero in some cases you might want to position this thing freely because I want to make sure it is right around the rotation point so I will just move it right there manually the height is all right and there would be a way to let cinema um, choose the center or the bottom if you want to let me just show you this tool it's called where did they put it it's uh, the access center 
and you can either use those um, shortcuts, just say center access to or something. Mm, this is what, what it has done already. So we can use this access center dot dot dot. So we get more options. And if I wanted to get the bottom, I would just click execute, but I have to make sure to include its children. Like from the shade, there are three subject uh, objects um, underneath. So say include children, and then I can sort of um, use all objects. What was this? Yeah, use all objects, and that way I can make sure. So this would be for going to bottom, this is for going to top. And of course I don't want to put it to top, but rather right on this axis. And make sure you leave the axis modification mode. And the one thing was position that, because if I now just take that object create a new null, not by using alt group, but just putting on it right there. So it's automatically generated on the world's uh, null. And then I can call it lamp or I don't know, desk lamp or desktop lamp. I don't know. And place all the objects in there. So now it might be easier for me to, to give them their material either for the whole thing or each one different. Then I have, if I want to put this on a table, which is 80 centimeters high, I can just put the coordinates in, put in 80, and then it's totally safe that this edge down here is right at 80 centimeters in my scene. And the other advantage of using nulls is, of course, that we now can rotate stuff around. So we we have now this uh, axis here, so we can say you rotate around here. So this works quite nicely. And if we want this shade stuff to follow, let me just correct the phone angle. I think it was wrong, but oh, maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Um, if I want the shade to follow this horizontal objects, I just pull the shade and put it right underneath the horizontal item. So now I have a hierarchy which works like this. I have the whole object moving, clicking on desktop lamp. I have the horizontal elements moving like this. And then I can take the lampshade and orientate it like this. So this would be a um, model which doesn't look um, too bad, I think. And it's just made out of, of primitives. Mainly it's cylinders, tubes, and a cone. So I think this is pretty, pretty good. And we, we don't even uh, have to be able to, to really model. It's just putting primitives uh, on top of each other. I will just have a look through if we missed stuff. Um, you should, of course, look yourself, like what options you have. There's loads of things you can create, like the Pentagon would be that, or if, if you are um, just an experimental type, then you will find out loads of things going through um, those objects here. For example, if I need a, you know, in the in the bathtub there is some to to not let the water um, 
run out you can you can use just maybe a tube like this so there's no need to 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 use splines or something those objects work quite nicely and there are loads of options in some cases So there's many things in real life you can imitate with, with primitives. What's interesting as well, of course, you can use a sphere. And the sphere has many different modes. You can subdivide them. And you could use the Fong angle creatively for example to have a disco ball then it would actually look like this so you can see the facets or just remove the phone so this is like a disco sphere or something then there is um, a pre-made figure be aware it's it's uh, has the wrong size and there is a landscape object which is good for creating abstract landscapes quickly two things are cool about this one option is border at sea level you can remove that you can of course change all its dimensions the way it's um, structured and if you need some planet quickly just click on spherical and then you will get a comet like this so you should experiment with that and always name your stuff and really use hierarchies for for effects like or for things like this and for being able to to um give them materials quickly like i could here just going to lamp chrome and um Maybe I want you to, to give the lamp shade a different color, so I could just use to make it um, really obvious yellow and maybe green. And I can say the whole lamp is supposed to be yellow, so I just put it on the very top object lamp and then for the shade I want it to be green something like this so the rule is quite simple the top object decides until there is one object underneath which has a material on its own so let's use another copy call it ring make it red and I place it there so this would be the lamp and I will just check what I missed we um, can easily create a wire out of this by putting the lamp in the so-called atom array using really 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 small radiuses you could create something like this might be cool for some stuff then what other effects do we have um, 
excuse me, we can use symmetry here if you want to have two lamps or whatever objects you can use them in symmetry then there is um, instances of course but we discussed that already we talked about arrays Yeah, you can deform them if you want to. Just use a deformer and put both things in in the same null object. Let's see if it works. I, I just used the FFD deformer. That's freeform deformation. Hit Alt-G so they are in the same group. And now let's see if uh, the lamp follows what I do to the FFD deformer. So if there is stuff you want to to change, you you could use a deformer. I rarely do that for architectural stuff, but in some cases it might be useful for modeling. If you want to actually bend stuff, that is sheared now. So um, you you just have to make sure there are polygons in there so it's it's subdivided and this might be cool for plants or anything you can't do with with um, those um, primitives okay what else is there you, you there are endless combinations of course so so I would just encourage you to to find out yourself but that was it for modeling using primitives maybe maybe one more scene a, uh, a couch if you're not really going for detail a couch could be done of course by using cubes and I always use duplicates just like that Now let me put this into a symmetry. This one. So if you just want to show abstract stuff, which is not highly detailed, then primitives are very efficient of course we can use the views to to see better and um, make all the cubes round by using just a huge fillet and I mean this could be a piece of furniture done within maybe a minute or so okay uh, that was it and Keep in mind, there are endless possibilities and you can also use those objects out of primitives for a base and then you can go further by converting them and do some more modeling with those structures. So there are quite a lot of possibilities, but we will discuss that in the next tutorial.